Hey everyone, this is David. Welcome back behind the velvet rope. Let's just get right into it today because we are joined by the one, the only Chris Catan. Hi, how are you? What is going on? Welcome. Congrats. You have a new podcast, Idiotically Speaking. Welcome. Yes, I do. I have a new podcast called Idiotically Speaking. And uh, I don't know, I think we've had uh, six guests so far. We had quite a few great guests, Dana Carvey and Fred Armisen and Cecily Strong. And we've had a number of great guests. Uh, so we've been very fortunate, you know. You have. You've had a lot of your SNL buddies, like you're doing it with two co-hosts, Andy Bolduc and Joey Nunes. Like, tell people yeah. that haven't listened yet, like, what they can expect if they tune in. Well, th- we do uh, We do like to do the interview portion, because that's just expected, I think. And uh, But we do, the whole show is a comedy show, so it's all meant for comedy purposes. And uh, we also, at the end of the sketch, at the, I'm sorry, at the end of the interview, we do a uh, an improv with the guests, kind of like a sketch, uh, like an SNL sketch, that kind of thing, but it's audio. So um, that's what we do at the end of the uh, each episode. We do like a 15-minute uh, improv. You do. It's really funny for everyone that hasn't listened. You do the interview portion. Have you learned anything new about, I mean, you know, you, you know, a lot of these people, like you said, like Fred and Dana and Cecily Strong, have you learned anything new about anyone from the interview portion of this podcast? Uh, yeah, I learned uh, a lot. I learned a lot about their history, like the, the guest hosts, where they were, who their influences were and, you know, who, who, what made them want to become who they are today. And it was really interesting to hear that part of the interview. Do you have a dream guest, SNL or otherwise? Like if you could choose anyone to invite on, idiotically speaking? Uh, well, it'll, it'd be fun to get like uh, Jennifer Coolidge, who's a friend who I'd love to get her. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, I think that'd be great. Other than that, um, I mean, the obvious, Tom Cruise, you know, people like that. Sure, why not? Sure, why not? But you, you, you like had me at Jennifer Coolidge. I mean, a little white lotus. I mean, who doesn't want to hear half an hour with Jennifer Coolidge? Right. Yeah, I think she's stupendous. And um, we worked together back in the Groundlings uh, as a comedy duo. So, you know, so we know each other from back then. So what was Jennifer like back at the Groundlings? Oh, she was just, she was the coolest. She was a really cool girl and um, and very smart and very witty and very dry and very funny and very, just, just very intelligent. She's just a really, and a really sweetheart of a woman. Yeah. Well, the Groundlings is such a great place to start. And then of course, SNL is the master class. Like you hear so much about SNL, you know, like, it's obviously a great gig. It's a difficult gig. Everyone says, like, what was your time like there? Like, what was working there actually like? Oh, that's a hard question to ask because that's there's so much going on. I mean, it was uh, it, there's a rhythm to the show that uh, you kind of get into this mode and you don't come out of it. And, and there's not much time for air, you know. I mean, there's not much time for to breathe, you know. Uh, that's part of the process process and um we just uh we just um it's just like music that whole show it's just so well tuned and it has such an amazing staff and crew and uh it's just so well it's so tight and um to be on that show is such a it was such an honor you know i had such a great time to do that and to the camaraderie of other people and other guy people doing characters you know it was such a it's so much fun what about, do you think, you know, Lauren Michaels keeps saying, you know, when we turn 50, I don't know, maybe I'll retire. I mean, this October in two months, he's, it's the 50th anniversary of SNL. Like, do you think Lauren Michaels will really leave? Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so, but maybe he will. Do I don't you- know. Do you think if he did leave, who would be your choice or who do you think would be a great successor to kind of run that show? Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure there's quite a few people that'd be wonderful that I don't even know who it would be who they're talking about. But 
you know, I know that Tina Fey's a name that they threw around, and that would be an incredible, I think she'd be incredible at that job. I think so, too. I think Lauren even mentioned Tina Fey, and I think he was joking, but I am all for Tina Fey taking over that job. Uh, yeah, she would be great. She'd be great at a lot of things. When you were there, like, do you have, I mean, Mango got to do a skit with J-Lo. Like, you know, do you have a favorite, like, co-host or musical guest that you remember doing a skit with that just kind of stands out to you? Uh, I remember doing um, the, uh, the uh, well, it was the Britney, Beer Britney Spears sketch. And uh, Chris Parnell and I were dance duo. And we danced to, uh, to her music. Uh, we we're interpretive dancers, and so we we're pointing to pictures on our 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 our, our shirt had emblems and written words that were lyrics from her song. So we would dance uh, in in you know to to the uh, to the moves of her songs. We wouldn't sing it, but we would we would just do some sort of ballet that was really corny and silly. That's but, a good uh, one. That was a fun one, um, and then. Doing Mango with J-Lo was a lot of fun. She was a real sport to play that. Yeah. That was that was a highlight. What about when you recreated I Wish It Was Christmas with Ariana Grande? Oh, that wasn't on SNL. That was on the yeah. Tonight Show. We yeah. Did that, that, show. That, was, that was so great. That was a big surprise that she was uh, there to join us. And that was just a great, a great deed that uh, Jimmy did. He was so nice to have a reunion for us, you know? I think that was so sweet. It was really funny. Well, on your podcast, Idiotically Speaking, like you said, there is an interview portion and then you do an improv portion at the end and the whole thing is comedy. Like you've done so many impressions yourself over the years and have done so much improv. Like, do you have a favorite person that you've impersonated? And like, is there anyone you have your eye on that you might want to try? Well, I like, I guess I can do an impression of uh, Harrison Ford. Uh, here I am. I'm 85 years old doing Indiana Jones. I got my whip and now I got carpal tunnel. Um, I That's that's my Indiana Jones. That's my Harrison Ford. <laughs> I like it. I'll take it. Thanks. Is there, you know, you have worked in so many aspects of this business. Now you have this new podcast. Like, is there something that you haven't done in the entertainment business or that you still want to try? Well, I haven't been uh, skiing. I haven't skied in a long time. I like to ski. <laughs> That'd be nice. That would be I, nice. I, I've been warned that I can't ski, that I shouldn't ski, but I, I, I like to take the test. Of skiing. Do you ski? I do not ski. It, you have you have an injury, right? Like, was that before Dancing with the Stars or during dance? I know you had an injury. Yeah, that was before Dancing with the Stars that I that I broke my neck. But um, yeah, I have an injury. But um, you know, I pulled through and had a lot of operations afterwards. So 